Hey Deckers, Cryo Utilities just got a huge 2.0 update. Huge kudos to Cryobyte33 for all of the effort and work that he's put into this update. I'll leave a link to his channel and Patreon below, so make sure you go and give him a follow to support his work. And if you want a much more in-depth technical analysis of all of the stuff going on in this tool, then check out his video as well. If you're wondering what this is all about, you may have heard of the swap file fix, but also anything that gets wild hearts running without crashing your Steam deck is definitely worth taking a look. So Cryo Utilities has tons of stuff that we're going to cover here today, but first off how to get it installed. He's made this incredibly easy. Just open up a browser in desktop mode, head it over to the Steam Deck Utilities GitHub location, which I'll link in the description below. Under install, right click the download link and say save as, and just stick this to your desktop so it's nice and easy to get to. Once that's saved, all you have to do is go and run the install cryo utilities. You only need to single click this, otherwise it will run twice. As soon as that's done, you'll get three new icons on your desktop of cryo utilities, uninstall cryo utilities, and update cryo utilities. So you can always just remove it or update it straight from your desktop as well. Once you run this, you'll get disclaimer to run this at your own risk as it is modifying files on your Steam Deck. Originally it was just the swap file, but he's really worked on this tool a lot and it's now doing a lot more. Next you'll need to enter your sudo password. If you don't know what your sudo password is or you've never set one, don't worry, we've got you covered. We actually have a video dedicated called Oh No, What's My Sudo? So you can go and get this rectified. Once you've got that sorted, just put it in and you'll be able to run the app. Cryobytes made an awesome little tool here so you can go through each of the individual settings. Green is that it's already set at his recommended. Red is that it's not. And you can just choose to run all of the recommended settings in one click from the home screen. If you're on the latest Steam OS, 3.4 this will take around a minute but if you haven't ever run the trim commands or you're not on the latest Steam OS this can take up to half an hour so if you don't want to take that chance then you can do the swap and memory changes manually and run the trim yourself at a later date. This recommended settings option does not run the storage bits so I will cover that manually and it also does not cover the UMA frame buffer fix which you still also have to do manually but it's highly recommended to go with these settings. If you're not familiar with the UMA frame buffer fix, what you need to do is shut down your Steam Deck, then power it on holding the volume up button, and then once it makes the Steam Deck startup sound, let go of the power button, but keep your finger on the volume up until you see this screen. Once you're on this screen, you want to go to Setup Utility on the bottom right, go down to Advanced, and then click into this and go down to the UMA frame buffer size, which at default will be one gig, but set this to four gig. And then make sure you press the two square button above the left joystick to save your settings and exit. So on top of the recommended settings, Crybates added some storage options as well. One is called sync game data. This will determine whether you've got files on your SD card or your local storage that is on the other drive. So this is quite common, especially for the SD cards, to have files on the internal drive, not just on SD card itself. So it's reading across two drives. So if you want to sync these up, you can run this tool and it will make sure that all the files are then on SD card, for example, or internal for a single game, speeding up the read and write process and really helping that load process. The other option that he's added is the delete game data. This sorts out all the prefixes and shader cache for games that you do and don't have installed. So you can clear out, obviously, shader cache for games that you do have installed. But this is a great utility to get rid of all the ones that you no longer have installed to reclaim some of that space. Now this does only do the prefix and shader cache. It doesn't do the old game files. If you want to get rid of your old game files, then you can check out our other video about reclaiming your unknown data, where you can use a separate tool called C Shader Cache to get rid of those old game files. And that's it. Now you can just go back to the stock settings if you want to by clicking the stock settings button, but the recommended settings are extremely safe and will generally get you between five and 10% FPS boost in a lot of games as well as making the frame rate are just a lot more stable and really improving those load times for a lot of these games as well because of the swap file fixes. As we showed at the start of this, thanks to Cryo Utilities, we are able to run Wild Hearts, even if it's not at the best FPS. Let us know in the comments below 
how much stability has been improved since you've run these tools, and what games you've seen the best performance increase in. Be sure to check out CryUtilities video for a full in-depth analysis of each of these tools. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.